What would you give to be famous? Everyone loves looking at famous people and dreaming about their lives, but very rarely do we stop to consider what it takes, or even how it works. Is it that money brings fame, or maybe the other way around? How do people make money from their fame, and what is the price for that fame? Nothing in life is truly free, and while fame can bring a lot of money, it also has some steep costs. By the time you're finished watching this video, you'll understand more about how fame is monetized and the drawbacks that come from being a public figure. Because in an age where anyone can become famous overnight, the question you need to ask yourself is, is it worth it? Welcome to Alux. The Evolution of Influencers the power of fame nowadays lies in how you can leverage it. Fame for its own sake isn't going to do much for you. It's how you can use it to your advantage that will line your pockets. But to understand how fame and influence are leveraged, we need to take a look at the history of influencers and brand ambassadors. And this history is much older than you might think. There's some debate over where it all began, but some point in the late 1800s with the rise of major brands like Coca-Cola, Wrigley's, or Cadbury, the story goes that they sent products to influential people so they could spread the word. The idea was that if someone important was happy with the product, others would soon follow. And the logic behind this goes even further back in time. You see, during the medieval period, kings would commission blacksmiths to craft weapons for them. And of course, this caused other people to want to work with those blacksmiths too. After all, if the king wants a sword from them, you know they must be good. We tend to gravitate towards those we perceive as powerful or successful. We desire that fame, that popularity. We want to live the lives that they have. And so we tend to imitate the things that they do and buy what they buy. Because subconsciously, we think it will bring us closer to where they are. And sometimes, it's not even subconscious. It started with kings and rulers because, for the longest time, they were our measure of success. For a while, it was mostly brands using influential people for their own needs, like Josiah Wedgwood did. Back in 1760, he made a tea set for Queen Charlotte, but he was smart about it. He marketed himself as the Potter of Her Majesty and claimed that his tea sets had royal approval. And what came out of that? Wedgwood Pottery became a luxury brand that is still considered fit for a king or queen today. He leveraged that opportunity. Then, in the 1900s, brands went into overdrive. We even created fake characters to make them ambassadors. Think the Marlboro Man or Ronald McDonald. Even the modern depiction of Santa as a jolly old fellow was an invention by Coca-Cola. Later, we turned to actors in Hollywood, then athletes and singers with sponsorships and brand deals. There's even talks of gladiators endorsing products during ancient Rome. Brands weaponized and monetized influence and fame whenever and wherever they could. And finally, the internet hit and the world changed forever. Social media gave us all a megaphone to air our thoughts, and we're all more connected than ever, but we still gravitate towards certain people. People like Zoella, Tanya Burr, or PewDiePie. These were not famous people, nor rich. They started out just sharing their lives and thoughts and grew to be massive. Social media gave them the tools to leverage all of this popularity into actual money, a lot of it. But how exactly did they make money from this? How does one turn a lot of subscribers or a viral video into money? Well, let's dig into that next. Monetizing the Spotlight For argument's sake, let's say you have an Instagram account or a YouTube channel. And to be fair, you probably do, right? You make funny videos or vlogs, maybe you post about yourself, the food you like, or give people tips about life. Slowly, your content starts to gain traction, and then one day you stop and realize that you have thousands of people coming for your content. What would happen if you asked them to support you with just a dollar a month? After all, giving a dollar to support someone that's making content you enjoy doesn't sound like a bad bargain, but to you, that could be easily a few thousand dollars a month. Donations, tips, and subscriptions are just one of the ways in which today's influencers can make money. Platforms like Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee allow content creators to monetize their fan bases directly. Sure, not everyone will send you money, but you don't need everyone to do it. Let's say you have 10,000 followers on Instagram. This is considered to be the cutoff between nano and micro-influencer. 
If 10% of your fan base sends you $5 a month, you're making five grand a month and $60,000 a year. That's not too bad. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We already saw how brands turn to famous people in order to push their products. And when your subscriber count hits a good enough number, they come after you too. One of the most common ways for influencers to earn money is through sponsored posts or videos. If you've been on YouTube, you've probably heard the familiar, this video was brought to you by, Sometimes it's sponsors like NordVPN who support our community. Or Skillshare. On other videos, you'll hear about how Raid Shadow Legends is the hottest game around. And have you used Audible recently? Now, there's nothing wrong with any of these. It's just a marketing tactic. And you know, history shows it works. Influencers get paid good money for these. Now, there isn't a number for how much you can get for these types of posts. But in general, the more subscribers or followers you have, the more you should be getting paid. Some people apply a baseline rule of charging 1% of their follower count. So if you have 10,000 followers, you'd be getting at least $100 per post. But that's just the bare minimum. Sometimes they take it a step further because becoming full brand ambassadors. This means that you'll dedicate yourself to posting and talking about a particular brand for a period of time. You usually see this in the fitness and fashion industries, but it's not limited to that. Brand ambassadors can have salaries or get paid hourly for their work, and they usually earn commissions through affiliate marketing. The brand ambassadors can make around $115,000 a year, but the median salary is around $24,000. And that's all extra from any other income opportunities they may have. Nothing says you can't combine it all. According to an article from Vox, micro-influencers can make $40,000 per year, but everything kind of goes out of control once you cross into celebrity status. As you grow past thousands of followers and into the millions, so does your income opportunities. Emily Ratajkowski earns about $80,000 per sponsored post, and Khloe Kardashian gets an insane $600,000. And she's still sitting under her siblings Kim and Kylie who earn over $800,000 per post. And that's before you can consider appearance fees for events, traditional advertising, and money made from your own businesses. Because when you're at that level, you could just launch your own products, right? Fame can bring in massive amounts of money. As your subscribers and followers grow, so does your bank account. However, unlike the famous Leslie Gore song, fame is not all sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows, there is a dark side to being so popular. The Untold Price of Fame at this point, you might be fascinated by the idea of becoming famous. After all, in many ways, it's easier than ever and there's definitely a lot of money in it. However, we tend to overlook the negative aspects of fame, not to mention all the trouble that people go through to get there. Being famous, and we mean truly famous, means that you have no privacy anymore. From the moment you step out of your home, the world will be watching your every move, twisting your every word. It's like the cops say when you get arrested, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Only in this case, you're facing the court of public opinion, and it can be brutal. When people are behind a screen, they don't hold any punches. It might not look like a big deal, or it might even be funny seeing some of the comments that get posted about famous people. But can you imagine seeing thousands or millions of comments about you? What you wear, how you look, what you're gonna do. And in many cases, it's not like you can just step away from that. If you're an influencer, social media is your job. You have to read the comments, engage with your audience, and produce content. You basically have a front row seat to the slaughterhouse. Not to mention that you're always expected to be your online self. If you have a persona that you play for videos, people get upset when you stop playing it, even in the real world. Fame isn't a switch you can flip and control. You don't get to decide when you're famous. But just because you don't control it doesn't mean that switch doesn't exist. Oh, it does. And if you do or say the wrong thing, it can be turned off in a flash. And we're not just talking about the so-called cancel culture. No, moving away from your niche or spending less time online can just as easily see you fall from the spotlight. And in some cases, you could even get banned from social media platforms and see your income stream evaporate. Granted, that's usually for serious rule breaking, but it's still something to remember. And so, like Shakespeare, we ask ourselves, to be or not to be famous. And now we circle back to our initial question. Is fame worth it? Well, that's going to depend on who you are as a person and what you want to accomplish. It's easy to look at famous people and think of their lives as dreamy, but there's a lot of work that goes into getting there and a lot of pressure. So think to yourself, can I handle that kind of pressure? 
If your answer isn't a definitive yes, then you should reconsider your aims. Fame can be a blessing if you know how to handle it. You'll have plenty of opportunities, money, and treatment. And honestly, that sounds awesome. You could even leverage that fame into a lot more success for yourself and your projects. There's definitely a lot of perks that come with fame, but it's all pointless if you can't handle the downside. Fame is like a transaction. You get the perks, but they come at a personal cost. What price are you willing to pay for that? Would you give away your privacy for money? How about living under a microscope 24-7? Because that's the gamble here, so think about that before committing to a path of stardom. But hey, at least you'll be doing that with a lot of money. Now, Aluxers, we're almost finished here for today, but we'd like to leave you with one more final thought, your bonus. In today's world, eyes on you are worth money, but so is authenticity. If you have a loyal fan base and you think that you could leverage that into some money, you need to be careful with the way you go about it. People can smell fakeness from a mile away, and the wrong move can set you back years. If you're advertising products, they need to be something that makes sense for your brand, and something that you actually believe in. If you're asking for donations or tips, then you should always find a way to give something in return. It's not about milking your community, it's about giving them something of value. People will happily support you if they feel like you're being honest about it. But what are your thoughts on the monetization of fame? We'd love to hear from you, so share your opinions in the comment section below. Until next time, Aluxers. Thank you for watching this video, Aluxer. If you found it valuable, consider subscribing to our channel and joining our awesome community. And if you're still hungry for more, we handpicked this video for you to watch next, or head over to our website for more amazing content. See you tomorrow.